the proxy section of burp suite is a very important section because it allows us to actually intercept packets directly from ourselves heading to the client. And the benefit of this is that it allows us to see the format of those packets, as well as any relevant information that we may be able to change or manipulate in order to get an exploit to work. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to show it through the command injection section of DVWA. With this section, we simply type in an IP address and press submit. And when we do this, it pings the IP address that was provided and returns the results. Now, ideally, we're going to want to try to inject something into this in order to allow us to um, exploit the actual server itself. But we're going to take a look at the actual format of the packets to understand what sort of things we may be able to do with this um, command injection uh, type example. To start, I'm going to turn on the intercept. And remember, this is through the, um, the embedded browser. So we don't have to worry about setting up any sort of proxy or anything like that. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to send a normal request. And you'll see that it intercepts it and demonstrates all of the information that needs to be sent for this request to be successful. So there are a few important pieces here. The first is the method of sending the post, which is a post in this case. Um, there are like a few other different, um, different types of um, ways of sending parameters, right? Um, you could have a post, you could have a put, you could have a few different other types of uh, types of calls that may exist. In this case, it's a post, which means that the data is sent separate from the URL. In some cases, you would have um, the data included in the URL itself. In this case, it's separate parameters, which are listed here. We can also see the parameters through the params. And you can see that this is all of the information. Oops, sorry, I shouldn't have changed that. This is all the information that is provided through the post request. So you see that there's two cookies that are provided or two pieces of information in the cookie, as well as two things in the body, the IP address, as well as the action, which is submit. So to break this down, the cookie allows us to identify ourselves to the server. The PHP session ID indicates our actual session that's active, the one that we used um, when we actually logged on to this um, DVWA. The security setting is low because um, we're set setting on like the lowest setting of DVWA. It has a few different settings that are available, so we're on the easiest setting. So that's the information that's actually stored in the cookie itself. Now, inside of the body, we have the actual things that are being provided by the user, who is us. That information includes the IP address, as well as the method of submission. And I can see this information is just set, sent in like plain text, right? There's nothing exceptional. There's nothing different actually happening here. It's just general plain text that's being sent to the server. So we can manipulate it as plain text. So this teaches me a lot of information, right? It shows me how the parameters are sent, what format they're in, and um, you know what I'll be able to do to actually manipulate them. I can just um, directly write things into the IP address parameter and that should allow us to be able to potentially get an attack. So the other pieces of information that we have here is the header. The header just gives all the general information for the server to understand how to process our requests. And then we have the hex, which is really like the whole body of the request. So this is sort of everything consolidated together into one big body. So once we're done looking at this, we can press forward and that will send the request as is to the server. Once this is done, I can come back here and I can see that the result is returned to us. You can see that this, of course, makes other requests as it's going through. This is something that um, the URL I don't really recognize here. So it could be something unrelated to our application um, or it could be something that the application is calling sort of in the background, right? So in this case, I can just continue to forward this and we're okay with that. Now, the question is, what can I do to manipulate this request? Well, one thing that I can do is when I submit this, I can right click on it and say, send to repeater. When I do this, it will put it into the repeater, in which case I can send the request and I can see the response that's sent back from the server. So you can see this is the response that the server actually sends back to us. And as well, I can go into my parameters and I can actually try altering um, pieces of them, right? So for instance, I could put maybe a semicolon at the end of this and try sending that and see what the return is. When I do this, you'll see um, in this case, uh, let's see what we get. 
right? We get pink could not find host 127.0.0.1 semicolon, right? So it says that it can't actually find that host. Um, so that tells me that it interpreted my semicolon as an actual input value. Um, so we could try some other things maybe to get this to work, right? So um, I don't know, usually when we chain commands, we can use um, semicolon or um, in the case of Windows, we can use ampersand usually to try chaining a command. So let's try sending that and see what we get in turn, right? And each time our response is gonna give us something different that we can see. We can see that this one ran successfully. So it didn't have a problem with this ampersand character, which means that it probably didn't interpret it as an input. So I can take a look at all the different pieces of information that exist. I can even render the page and it will show me exactly what that page looks like. Well, as close as possible, assuming there's nothing special that needs to be included in it, right? So this is really great. It allows us to be able to accurately try sending and receiving requests one at a time without me having to, you know, continually go back to the web form and submit it each time. So to give an example on a Windows machine, one thing that we could do is we could try putting in like an, an ampersand and then dir, for instance, and that might be something that might give us uh, uh, an interesting sort of uh, output, right? So in this case, I can try to look and see if I got anything. And as you can see, I do get the output of my dir, uh, of my dir command. This tells me that this was interpreted as a command. So if I render this, of course, you could see that same sort of output written out like that. And now from here, we now have something that is a potential exploit, right? I was able to um, create a command injection through this, um, just using the proxy and the repeater. So um, it's a fairly straightforward process to be able to sort of trial and error, send and receive responses and determine um, what is actually happening with the web application when we send and receive different things. So the main value of the proxy is to be able to understand what information is sent whenever we send um, you know, a request to the server, what the format of that data is in. And with the repeater, we can potentially see what manipulations that data may possibly have in terms of impact.